Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to video four in my race day quads Joshua Bardwell F7 build. Uh, yeah, you heard that right. This is video four. I'm going to go ahead and flash a uh, playlist up here. First three videos uh, and uh, let you read. Uh, as the list gets longer and longer, it takes uh, longer for me to review it. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw it up here so that you can see what the topics are. But basically we... Uh, have a quad that's put together. In this video, we are going to add a new model to our radio. We're using OpenTX on a RadioMaster TX16S. I highly recommend a radio with OpenTX, and I highly recommend this radio. I think it'll be the only radio you ever need. Okay, so with the TX16S taking center stage, I'm going to get uh, rolling on adding a new model. And here's something y'all need to know. Uh, if you feel like I'm going too fast for you, Please know that in the description below, I have a link to a playlist. I've done over 20 videos on this radio alone. Just open to, I mean, everything that you could possibly need to know as a beginner and an intermediate. It's all there. Starts from absolute bare bones scratch and takes you through some pretty advanced stuff. So be sure to check that out if you need help with OpenTX and, um, and this radio. But for now... I am going to dive right in. So without further ado, let's do this. So right now my screen is on an existing model right now, but what I want to do is I want to add a new model. So I'm going to go ahead and long press right here and model select. I'm going to long press again until I get this screen. And now I'm going to long press again and I'm going to say short press create model. Boom. Now, normally there's a wizard here, but there's not a wizard here. I don't know whether it's a bug or what, and it doesn't really matter because all the work is done for us already anyway. So just out of curiosity, let's go ahead and long press on model and go over to inputs. And here is what it has set up for us. It has set up for us the first four mandatory things that we need for flight, which are aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. And then if we go to mixes, you will see that it has mapped aileron to channel one, elevator to channel two, uh, throttle to channel three, and rudder to channel four, which is basically the way the radio is set up. And that is actually also how I have my beta flight set up. So when uh, we go ahead and start working on the receiver tab and beta flight, everything is going to hopefully work as expected without having to do anything additional. So that's that. We've got our new model. Model 44. It's not a very good name, is it? So real quick, this is the model button and this is the system button. If you long press either one of these guys, you're going to get a bunch of sub menus. Let's take a look. Now, if you imagine this kind of like Windows or Mac or whatever, and these are the tabs. So each one of these is a tab so I can page through these tabs and you can see them highlighted. And we're going to get to know these screens, but the most important screens are inputs and mixes. And they've done all the work for us. It's pretty cool. So let's go back to the model setup screen. I'm going to go ahead and press right here so that I can edit the model name. All right, so what I'm going to do on this screen is I'm just going to give the model a better name. So I'm going to click right here. So now my M is highlighted so I can scroll and choose different letters. So I can pick anything I want. I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. I spelled test wrong, but we're just going to call it Tesser. And we're going to go ahead and just hit return. So we're still in model setup, which is exactly essentially where we want to be. We've added a model. It's that simple. And what we need to do now is we need to bind this model to our receiver and our quad. All right, so what I've got for you here is a super tight shot of the receiver. It's an FR Sky uh, RXSR. It's a D16 protocol um, receiver. It has S bus and telemetry, and it's teeny, and that's why I love it. But what I'm going to do is this button right here, this button is going to become integral in getting this receiver to bind with our radio. What we're going to have to do, this is called the bind button. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to hold the bind button down at the exact same time as when we power up the quad. It's actually kind of difficult to do with just one person, but we're going to see how, how it shakes out. And then at the exact same time, we actually have to get on our radio and initiate a bind process there. All right, so this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to press and hold your model button. 
so that you get to the model setup page. We're actually there, it's the first page. Then you're gonna use your scroll wheel and you can scroll down. That's a lot of scrolling, so what you can do is you can cheat and you can scroll up instead. And then it's just a few clicks to get to this internal RF mode. And it's off by default. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click and we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna turn it on a multi. And then, now that it's blinking, we're gonna select it and then we're gonna move on to here. And you see that um, module update recommended? We're gonna do that in another video, so just ignore that for right now. So, it is set to fly sky right now, which is a wrong protocol, so click it and roll it. And where we're gonna roll it is to FR sky. Make sure you pick the right one. We just want simply FR sky and click. And the protocol on this one is a D16, so it's already set. And now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna to go to receiver and I'm gonna to go to bind. And now is where it gets tricky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this button right here to get it chirping. This is gonna be a test run. I forgot about this part. Let's go ahead and select telemetry on, and now it's gonna chirp. Now while it's chirping, I gotta do the other part with the quad, and I'll show you what that part is. So we're gonna kill this for right now, and we're gonna put this off screen. The good news about binding is you only have to do it once. Once it's bound, it's bound. All right, so remember, our bind button is right here. I'm gonna have to pull it out some because I need to show you something. So if I pull it out, I can show you the battery too. All right, here we go. This is tricky business. All right, so what I've done is I've got my battery in position, but it's not making the physical connection. So what I wanna do is on my radio, again, I'm gonna scroll up to bind, and here's the tricky part. I'm gonna click this and now it's and I hit the bind button and it's gonna beep so now I've hit my bind button like so and let's see if I can't do that okay let go of the blind but the bind button like that and then we'll plug it back in and all right so I know I have something because when I go and I look at my radio it's showing me that I've got a signal right here all right so what I've done is I've actually unplugged the quad so that I can show you three indicators that you're bound uh, the first one is an audio indicator hopefully you'll be able to hear it when I plug in Hopefully you heard her say telemetry recovered. So telemetry recovered is one. The one that we just talked about uh, is one. And then the third one is on the quad itself. And the third one is on the receiver. When you're bound correctly, you get a little green light. That's what happens when I turned off the radio. Okay, so three indicators that you are properly bound. All right, so the title of this video is probably gonna be something along the lines of adding a new model and binding it to your radio. And if that's what you're interested in, this video is pretty much done. But I wanna share a little bit of bonus material with you because uh, the radio did set up some inputs and, and mixes and we just kind of glossed over that. So I just wanted to do a ultra high overview of inputs and mixes because they're gonna become very, very important later on when we start adding functionality to this thing. All right, so let's talk about inputs first because when we added the new model, the radio automatically set up an aileron, an elevator, a throttle, and a rudder, which are the four basic things that we need for flight. So what about inputs? What are they? Well, we as users need a way to interact with the radio. And the way we interact with the radio is either using sticks, or switches and of course there's pots and other stuff too but focus mainly on the sticks and the switches 
So we tell the radio what we want based on a stick movement or a switch flip. And what inputs do is they define the switches and the sticks that we're using so that we can interact with the radio and control it to have some sort of predictable outcome. Let's take a look at mixes. Notice that the mixes screen and the input screen are very, very similar. All right, so we've established a way for us to interact with the radio. Now the radio needs a way to interact with the receiver on the quad. And as you know, your receivers have a certain number of channels on them. So what mixes does is this is the mapping between the inputs and the channels on your receiver. And for the four sticks, it's not that complicated. But say, for example, if we wanted to add an input like flight mode, and we wanted a three position switch because we wanted angle mode, horizon mode, and acro mode, in the mixes, we would further define the three positions on that one switch. And we'll get to that. But that is essentially the very, very basics. Inputs is how we interact with the radio, and mixes is how the radio interacts with the receiver on the quad. And as you may or may not know, the receiver passes that information along to the flight controller, and then the flight controller makes a whole bunch of decisions and sends information onto the ESCs, which tell the motors how fast to spin, and lo and behold, you have flight. So that's pretty much the overview. Uh, if you want nauseating detail on this, uh, I have a video in my TX16S series where I go into this in absolute nauseating detail. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description here for this video. But otherwise, I'm going to wrap this one up. So in video five, we are going to go back into beta flight and we are going to configure everything for flight. We will also need to look into um, updating the firmware on our ESCs, which we'll use BL Heli for. We need to make sure our motors are spinning the right way. And then we have our final pre-flight checklist that we'll do before our maiden flight. So anyhow, I'm Steve. I hope you got benefit out of this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. I try really hard to explain some of this technical jargon clearly and articulately in a way that uh, even beginners can understand. And I hope, and I hope that I was able to achieve my goal. All right, I'm Steve signing off. I'll see you in the next video.